Madam Clerk, roll, roll call, please. Councillor Mackey. Present. Councillor Gamble. Present. Councillor Burley. Present. Councillor Carlton. Present. Councillor McLean. Present. Councillor Desai sends his regrets. Councillor Patterson. Present. Warden Hicks. Here. Councillor Clumpus. Here. Councillor Keeveny. Present. Councillor Body. Present. Councillor O'Leary. Present. Councillor Woodbury. Present. Councillor Milne. Present. Councillor Sewever. Present. Councillor Bordignon. Present. Councillor Robinson. Present. Councillor Hutchinson. Present. We have all members here with the exception of Councillor Desai. Thank you for that. And Council, if anyone has been following the breaking news this morning, you will know that Her Majesty the Queen is apparently uh, not well. Her health is in question and the family has uh, gathered at, Bal is it Balmoral? Is that the right way to say it? Uh, so obviously our thoughts will be with uh, the Queen and her family. We'll turn next to the land acknowledgement. <clears throat> we acknowledge with respect the history, spirituality, and culture of the Anishinaabek, the Six Nations of the Grand River, the Haudenosaunee, and Wendat, Wyandot, Wyandot peoples on whose traditional territories we gather and whose ancestors signed treaties with our ancestors. We recognize also the Métis and the Inuit whose ancestors shared this land and these waters. May we all as treaty people live with respect on this land and live with peace and friendship with all of its diverse peoples. Council, is there any declaration of interest pecuniary or otherwise? Seeing none, we'll proceed. I would just say if one comes up during the course of the meeting, I would ask you to declare it at that time. Item 6A, County Council and Committee of the Whole Minutes dated August 11th, uh, 2022. I'm looking for a mover. A move by Councillor Burley, seconded by uh, Councillor Clumpus. Is there any discussion on those uh, minutes? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? That's carried, thank you. Item 6B is Committee of the Whole, closed meeting minutes dated August 11th, 2022 as well. Looking for a mover, Councillor Keaveny, seconded by Councillor Gamble. Any discussion on those minutes? I call the question, all those in favor? Anyone opposed? That is carried as well. Item 6C is a long-term care committee of management meeting minutes dated August 23rd, 2022. Uh, looking for a mover. I'll take Councillor Bordignon and seconded by Councillor Robinson. Any discussion on those uh, minutes? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Is there anyone opposed? That is carried. <clears throat> We have no closed meeting uh, matters, Madam Clerk. And so we move to item number eight, which is the closed meeting investigation report dated September uh, 1st, 2022. Uh, I see Mr. McCarthy. Is that who is going to be? Mr. McCarthy, can you hear us okay? Good morning. Yes, I can, Your Worship. Yes, good morning to you. Um, we all have your uh, report, which was added. Uh, everyone seems to be nodding. You've seen that report. So, Mr. McCarthy, I can turn things over to you and perhaps you can introduce uh, your report and speak to it, and then we'll open it up for questions if there are any. Am I good? Thank, uh, thank you, and through you, Your Worship. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for uh, inviting me to speak at your council meeting. Uh, good morning, uh, Your Worship, members of council, members of the public. Um, I'll be very brief uh, with this report. I understand that it's, it's been circulated and, and, and it's quite brief itself. Uh, we received two closed meeting complaints. Our role in a closed meeting investigation is to consider whether the meeting was properly closed within the requirements of the Municipal Act. Uh, and there are essentially three requirements for closing a meeting, um, or that's how we've broken it down rather. Uh, the meeting must be closed in a, uh, in, in a resolution passed in open session. So council needs to be in open session and pass a closed meeting resolution. The resolution needs to give a 
some information as to the subject matter as well as cite the exception. Uh, and then the actual content of the meeting needs to fall under one of the exceptions provided for in the Municipal Act. So the Municipal Act, the default is that meetings are open to the public, but there are, of course, circumstances where uh, council is permitted to, to meet and closed. The two, um, the two complaints that we received pertained to meetings in June. Uh, one pertained to June 9th Committee of the Whole and to an added item uh, pertaining to a discussion of, of litigation. The second related to June 23rd Committee of the Whole and an item relating to uh, remuneration of, uh, of staff of the, uh, of the county. In both circumstances, we conducted what we call a preliminary review. So we considered if all of the facts as alleged are true, if they are all true, will there be a breach of the municipal act? If the facts, if they're true, could constitute a meeting that shouldn't have been closed or wasn't closed per the municipal act, then we do an investigation into the facts and the circumstances. But in circumstances where even if all of the facts are exactly as laid out in the complaint, it still wouldn't uh, be a, a meeting closed contrary to the municipal act, we don't conduct a full investigation. And in that case, we, we analyze the circumstances and, and provide a report. And that's what occurred in this case. Both of the allegations of closed meeting, we considered if all of the facts are as alleged, would this meeting be improperly closed and we determined it wouldn't. In both circumstances, there was a resolution passed in open session. The resolution provided sufficient information to the public and the subject matter was properly within the exceptions. And so no further investigation was required. So as I said, it's, it's a short and sweet report and, and a very brief explanation. I'm happy to answer uh, any questions to the extent that I can. Thank you for that, Mr. McCarthy. Council, are there any questions on this report? Uh, Councillor Milne. Thank you, Mr. Warden, and thank you, Mr. McCarthy, for your report. I have no questions other than I want to thank the clerk's department for their professionalism in making sure that council is uh, properly uh, following the Municipal Act. So thank you very much, Madam Clerk. I do not see any other hands. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to ask for a mover because I did not uh, ask for a mover at the beginning. Councillor Carlton moves, seconded by uh, Councillor Mackey. Uh, any further discussion? Can I call the question? All those in favor? Is there anyone opposed? That is carried. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Mr. McCarthy. Thank you. All right, we are now, we have no bylaws. And we're on to item number 10, good news and celebration. Does anyone have anything to report? Councillor Klumpus, we'll start with you. Good morning, everyone. I think I'm on. Um, Labor Day weekend is always very, very busy and hectic in, in our municipality. Um, we have uh, MIF uh, that uh, now is back in in person and uh, it was great to see everyone uh, joining together to celebrate four films, four nights, four parties, actually five films because there was a wonderful matinee uh, showing on Thursday afternoon that actually took home the uh, People's Award. So it was a great weekend to kick it off again back in, in person and the big tent held up, the weather held, the dinners were wonderful, so everyone had a great time following that. Uh, there was also the fall fair in full swing. And um, of course, immediately as soon as uh, myth is over, the scarecrows appear. And uh, so Monday saw all of the corn husks uh, being distributed. The decorations are fabulous this year in celebration of their 25th year. It's, uh, it's quite amazing to see this, uh, this event carry on that long with, uh, and some with the original um, volunteers. So you can imagine, uh, um, they're getting a little tired <laughs> and looking for recruits to, to come in and help. Fabulous uh, display. The uh, scarecrows are all now up and uh, the vignettes. Um, there's a lot of competitions going on. And of course, the day all culminates on um, uh, the uh, Friday before uh, the Apple Harvest Craft Show happens and uh, the celebration will be over for another year. So come out and visit. 
enjoy uh, lots of picture taking opportunities. Thanks everyone. Thank you for that. And did you ever speak about uh, the visit that you had on the volunteer day? <laughs> Thank you for the reminder. Um, this was really quite a, spe a special day for us. Um, on um, August the 24th, I believe it was, we had our uh, volunteer appreciation event, which we have every year. But of course, this year was back again after an absence of two years. And we had a special guest attend with us. And I spoke about this uh, at the last county meeting. Um, the Lieutenant Governor of Ontario joined us for this occasion. Um, she, we had her for the better part of the day, and it began at two o'clock in the afternoon with a tour of Meaford Hall and a special forum that we gathered at, uh, at her request uh, to talk about issues of particular interest to our folks in, in Meaford. We chose uh, to talk about the, our community safety and well-being plan with specific focus on youth mental health uh, coming out of, out of the pandemic in particular but just the effect that uh, this absence of two years to our young people being in their normal uh, milieu, uh, what kind of, an, of uh, an impact will this have had on our young people and what can we do as a municipality to help them along on their journey? It was an amazing discussion. I just introduced the project and, or the, the topic and they just took off and ran with it. It was really uh, wonderful to catch the and capture the ideas that came out of that group. And that uh, followed with a, a, a tour for her of the uh, stained glass windows at uh, Christchurch Anglican in the afternoon. And then we headed into the volunteer appreciation dinner uh, that evening. So it was about two, around 200, close to 200 in attendance. Um, thank you very much, uh, Your Worship, for attending with us and being part of the event. And um, it was uh, it, we presented to our uh, our uh, community builder awards to three individuals who um, uh, who have uh, spent their lifetime in uh, Meaford uh, volunteering with the Kiwanis Club. It was a wonderful day. Um, we really valued her attendance, and I understand she will be coming back into the area sometime soon as well. And uh, we will be uh, presenting an oak tree um, at that time uh, when she comes back. So all in all, a very successful day, but thank you for asking. I've totally blanked on that one. Thank you. And next is Councillor Bordignon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Warden, through you. Um, a, couple, a couple of events coming up. Uh, this weekend is the uh, Beaver Valley Fall Fair. Uh, we would have had the 150th um, anniversary a couple of years ago, but because of COVID, we are postponed. So we're like a 150.2. Uh, so that's happening this weekend, um, starting tomorrow. It's going to be a great um, with not just the Agricultural Society, but uh, all members of, of the town um, back in person after two year hiatus. Everybody's looking forward to that. And then um, September 24th, we are having um, Oktoberfest uh, back in person at the community center. And that's one of our, our uh, fall fundraising initiatives with for the Grand Center Nations Committee where all the uh, funds go back into the community. So thank you. Um, two great events that are coming up in the town of the Blue Mountains. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Councillor Salever? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Warden. And uh, yesterday we had the Seniors Information and Active Living Fair. Um, we've had these in the past, um, and this was an in-person event at Bayview Park outside. Uh, it was a beautiful day. And um, the, these uh, Information and Active Living Fairs, uh, they provide an opportunity for seniors to get together and learn about the various support services that are available for seniors. Uh, there were 14 organizations participating um, and so there was a lot of good information there on all kinds of things like Alzheimer's support. Um, the Grey Bruce Health Unit was there um, and you know all of these different organizations that seniors can access uh, and it was a great day. There were uh, coffee, juice, sandwiches, muffins, so people did come and we had a really good turnout and it was a beautiful day at the park and a lot of the seniors got to learn about things that the community has to offer. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Mackey. 
Thanks, Mr. Warden. Good morning, County Council. Uh, the Desborough Agricultural Society had their 162nd uh, fall fair on the past weekend, and it was certainly well attended. It's a tribute to the uh, agricultural community. It's certainly alive and well in Gray County. Uh, we had the opportunity, there was a nice little parade at the beginning, and uh, we were able to provide our, our MPP, Rick Bart Byers, with his first ride in a manure spreader, so he was appreciative of that. Uh, I'm thankful there was only two seats, so they were taken by uh, Alex Ruff and, uh, and Rick Byers, so uh, I didn't have to have the, the rickety ride, but it was certainly a great day, and it was well attended, and, uh, you know, as other members, people are just uh, certainly happy to be out and about, and uh, Chatsworth is celebrating, I'm not sure what number, Brian, but they're having their fall fair on uh, September 17th. Uh, it's occurring at the Williamsford Community Centre, so it'll be another uh, you know, good tribute to our agricultural community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Keaveny. Thank you very much, Mr. Warden, and good morning, everyone. And I just wanted to acknowledge um, the housing task force event that um, our MP Alex Ruff held on the 1st of uh, September. And I know several were in attendance, but I wanted to thank our staff from Gray County and, of course, the staff from Bruce County, as well as the United Way and others who presented. It was really encouraging to see that regional approach to our affordable housing crises. And I, I look forward to any outcomes that might uh, help move us towards some solutions in that regard. And I also wanted to add to Mayor Klumpus's uh, really wonderful uh, discussion about all that's happened in Meaford. Something else that we're really proud of is our new local motive. We're calling it our director of planning, uh, Robert Boyd, is doing online videos, um, helping people sort of understand um, all the nitty gritty, so to speak, of planning, especially in relation to our official plan update, which we will be uh, having a public meeting on on the 19th of September. And we've had a tremendous amount of public input into this project. And we're just uh, really proud of the report that's coming together. And if anybody's interested, you can find it on our municipal website. It's a, it's a really well done report. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Keaveny. Lots happening in Meaford. Uh, Councillor Burley, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Warden. I would like to be very proud of the Kemble Women's Institute, the longest serving institute in the world. 125 years. Uh, they're having a coffee and tea at the lookout Sunday from one to four. Everyone's invited. Uh, and it's just amazing to have an institute that long serving in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Deputy Warden McQueen. Thank you, Mr. Warden and County Council. Uh, a few things to report on. Uh, just from our event this past spring, our rodeo, we had a report yesterday at Council that we raised almost $35,000 toward the Mark Dell Hospital, and we're planning uh, the third rodeo in the spring of 2023, the same uh, long weekend, or the last weekend in May. We have uh, three fairs that happen in, uh, in Gray Highlands. Uh, we had the Markdale Fair last weekend in, Mark De or in August, which was very successful and actually a really good turnout, as I think Councilor Mackey has, has said, as people are just happy to get out and, and uh, certain take part in events. The Paper Sham Fair is coming up on the 16th and the 17th with a tractor pull on the Sunday of the 18th. And then the Rockland Fair will be on the 27th of uh, August, or September as well. And one of, the, one of the highlights of that is the men's apple pie baking. And then they are auctioned off at the cattle show in the evening and the fundraising, or the, the, the money that's raised from those pies go back into the egg society. So there's usually, it usually has a little bit of a, 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 a they call it, um, Participation sort of increases during election time. So I'm, I'm presuming that there will be a lot of uh, pie makers uh, at this uh, year's uh, fair. So anyway, stay tuned for that. So thank you. So the pie making hasn't happened yet. Sorry. You asked a question, Mr. Warden, so. <laughs> So, so yeah, it's it's on the 27th in the morning of, uh, of the Markdale Fair and uh, certainly all the uh, uh, volunteers from the fair will provide the ingredients and uh, all the pie makers uh, put on their aprons and uh, dust off their uh, whatever and uh, 
Heliopolis and uh, again, they, they auction them off in the evening. So some bring as high as two or $300 or maybe even $400, just depends. So it's an opportunity for a fundraiser for the fair. So thank you, Mr. Warden. Thank you for that. Uh, next is Councillor Boddy. Thank you, uh, Warden Hicks. Uh, looking back, uh, several of us attended the AMO conference uh, in Ottawa. I thought it was one of the best day in the number of years that I've been. Uh, I, uh, I counted seven different sessions that were on mental health addictions, homelessness, and uh, and housing. And I don't have a count, but it was several that was uh, climate change, uh, blue box, uh, waste management, all big issues that uh, all of us are dealing with. Uh, quick talk with the Associate Minister of, of Mental Health and Addictions, uh, Michael Tobolo. He had 29 um, uh, delegations on uh, mental health and addictions from different communities. So it's a big issue that's facing all of us. Uh, I do note, and I guess it's uh, some of it is, is uh, in a report uh, tonight, uh, today. Uh, AMO has uh, submitted reports to the provincial government on uh, addictions and mental health, looking for an integrated uh, program that uh, we can all work together and have more support from the, uh, from the province. Uh, as well as uh, one on housing uh, that was uh, submitted earlier in August. So those, that's what's going on looking back. I thought it was a really good uh, conference. Uh, looking forward, uh, Gray County um, Fall Fair is this weekend at Victoria Park. Following weekend is a great time to be in uh, North Gray. Rib Fest will be on at the uh, Harry Lumley Bayshore Community Center in the North Parking Lot. That's always a fun event. And a uh, much, much, much bigger event is the uh, annual Cobble Beach uh, Concord Elegance that, uh, of course, the uh, main features are out in uh, Georgian Bluffs at Cobble Beach. Uh, Friday, I believe, is uh, Wings and Automobiles at uh, the uh, uh, Georgian Bluffs Airport up near Wyerton. Saturday is a really new fun event called Concord de Le Mans, so Concord de Lemons. So uh, interesting cars that are sort of uh, one of a kind that won't make it into the Concord Elegance will be uh, on display and we'll have some fun uh, along First Avenue West and on sound by the library, followed by uh, sessions, um, educational sessions at uh, the Roxy. And then the big event will be Sunday at a Cobble Beach when they bring out the really big one of a kind, uh, sort of the most beautiful, elegant, special cars in North America. So it's a pretty big event that... Uh, you know, I, I know a couple of years ago, the uh, winner flew in and his aircraft from uh, Georgia. And um, he's won, I think, a couple of years in a row with different cars. So like, they, it really is a big North American event that people come in from all over. So, and I think they're probably still looking for volunteers as well. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Robinson. Thank you, Mr. Warden and good morning to County Council. First off, uh, Councillor Boddy, thank you very much for the comments with respect to the AMO conference. I will certainly carry that forward to the board, so appreciate all of that. It just helps in building uh, future conferences. Uh, Tis the season for um, international plowing matches, uh, local plowing matches, as well as fall fairs. And certainly I just want to acknowledge the Durham Agricultural Society that held their uh, fall fair this past long weekend. It was the 162nd annual fall fair. Uh, we were pleased to have a walkthrough of the fair with uh, Minister Thompson, MP Alex Ruff, um, MPP Byers, um, hosted by the president of the Agricultural Society, Debbie Tucker, and I was also fortunate to attend. It was um, a wonderful uh, a time, of, uh, time of year. Certainly, we have the Bentick Plow Match coming up, as well as the Norman B. Township Plow Match this weekend. And, uh, you know, it's the most wonderful time of the year when we can gather as a community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have I exhausted the hands? I think I have. So we'll move on then. I'm uh, going to adjourn. I'm going to say move by Councillor Gamble. <laughs> Seconded by Councillor Hutchison. That we adjourn. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? That's carried. Thank you. We'll just take a second to move over to Committee of the Whole. <laughs>